passionately believe in the world-changing power of blasphemy, writes Ayan Hirsi Ali in her latest book, Heretic. She calls for a fundamental reformation of Islam and recognition that it is not a religion of peace if it wants to avoid eventual collapse. Is she right or is she stirring up trouble by suggesting it's a problem affecting an entire faith and not a tiny proportion who pervert it? We'll ask her in a moment. First, here's Secunda Kamani. Ever since 9-11, there's been an intensified debate within the Muslim community and beyond around whether the religion is in need of reform or whether the causes of extremism are linked more to politics and economics than theology. After all, the majority of victims of terrorism are Muslims themselves. And if the religion is to be reformed, given Sunni Islam lacks central religious authority, who can do that and how without leaving the foundations of a religion based on a book believed to be the word of God. Ayan Hirsi Ali has been one of the most outspoken critics of Islam. The Somali-born writer and survivor of female genital mutilation says she was once a strict Muslim before becoming disenchanted. We face a poisonous and fanatical ideology that wants to pervert one of the world's major religions, Islam. We're used to hearing messages from leaders, Muslim and non-Muslim, after terrorist attacks, emphasizing that extremism is a perversion of the religion. Hirsi Ali disagrees. In her latest book, Heretic, she states her view clearly. Islam is not a religion of peace. It's a hugely controversial and to many offensive view. She says she's been denounced by Muslims and by what she describes as Western multiculturalists who accused her of Islamophobia. Her new book lays out how she thinks Islam needs reforming. But what credibility will those calls have within the Muslim world given she once reportedly said the Prophet Muhammad would be considered a perverse man and tyrant by Western standards. That was Sekunda Kamani and Ayan Hirsi Ali uh, joins us now from uh, New York. President Obama said we're not at war with Islam. Do you think we are? Islam is at war with us. Islam unreformed. And in the book I distinguish, I say there is one Islam but there are three sets of Muslims. And what gives me hope is the fact that today there are Muslims who actually want reform as opposed to say 10 years ago. There were probably Muslims who wanted reform but they were not audible. Uh, I'll give you an example of a man whom I debated three years ago, Majid Nawaz, a British citizen. Three years ago he was arguing religion is, Islam is a religion of peace. Today he's arguing alongside with me that Islam needs a reformation. And yet I've Have I lost you? Yeah, no, I, I'm reflecting on that. I know I've spoken to highly educated Muslims today who believe that you're incredibly offensive in what you're putting forth, that you're not working within Islam. You're writing this or you're announcing this almost as an atheist uh, looking in from the outside. Is that how you feel? The people like this gentleman you spoke to who say that they are offended by pleas for a reformation and for a transformation of Islam that takes young people away from being lured into the Islamic State and into the jihadi narrative, they are the ones who don't want change. And what I find hopeful is that there are more and again, more and more Muslims because jihadism, Sharia law, Islam is killing Muslims more than anyone mm. else that there is a group that is standing up today and we need to stand with them those individuals I mean Osama a cleric Osama Hassan who is also another British citizen doesn't agree with everything I say but he agrees with the assertion that today Islam is ripe for a reformation the only way it can get out of the crisis in which it is it's so interesting that, but when you describe Islam in its true form uh, as one that's practiced in the way that ISIS uh, describe it, it's a very literalist interpretation that seems to put you and ISIS on the same page and leave out most people in the middle who manage to work within and around Islam. Here's a challenge to, the, to British society. There are three young girls, straight A students of Bethnal Green, and they sneak out, they sneak away from their parents' home. They are loved, they're popular, they're intelligent. And they sneak out to be a part of the Islamic State. And so are many, many more British citizens, French citizens, Danish citizens, American citizens. Listen, that is a crisis. 
we can we can carry on you know with the drone attacks with the military means with the counter surveillance but there comes a point and more and more muslims agree with me now that we need a counter narrative and that counter narrative is one of a radical transformation that is what i'm pleading for it's um, a peaceful optimistic message but but uh, ex explain what that counter narrative is are you asking them to believe in something different to what they understand as Islam? I think that it, within Islam as a narrative, it is possible to review it. And I identify five key precepts that if you change, you can still keep the five main pillars of Islam. You can get rid Sharia law, you can get rid of jihad, you can get rid of commanding right and forbidding wrong, you can invest in life before death, and you don't have to follow the example of the Prophet Muhammad literally, but you can as a Muslim still maintain the other five pillars. You can pray, you can fast, you can pray, ch pay the charity, you can visit Mecca as much as you like, and you can confess to the fact that you're a Muslim. So it is possible to persuade Muslims that if they change some of these key precepts that are keeping them in a vicious cycle of violence that it's possible to still retain the, to retain the religion and you know what the Islamic State people are doing you know what the jihadists are doing they're scaring Muslims into saying if you question the Prophet Muhammad's morality or the Quran you're giving up Islam and that is not true and the way to challenge it is not only through drones and military means, I think it is through persuasion and I think you just can't drone bad ideas out of people's heads. I'm Hersi Ali, great to talk to you. Thank you very much.